You know, this time of year, we were chatting around the table before service, and there is something to love about every day and every season in Santa Fe. If I had to pick one to love the most, it would be fall. I don't know if it's because that's when I came here and, and found our first home. Um, I don't know if it's because of the Aspens, which I, I love so deeply. I don't know if it's because of the incredible colors that happen in the sky. I don't know. Maybe it's all of those things. And as I said, there's something about every day and every season to love. As we are exploring this morning the question of what is the worth of spiritual food, first I must remind you that I'm Reverend Ann Ray and how thrilled I am to be in service with this fabulous community, which is where it's at. And what is it? Hang around and you'll find out. And I get to be the senior minister. And a couple of days ago, well, actually, depending on how you look at it, a couple of days ago was the anniversary of my first talk as senior minister. And a couple of days from now is the anniversary of when I was actually elected by the congregation to be the senior minister. So yeah. this is a very special time for me. And that, by the way, was seven years ago. Yeah. And Carol, isn't every day 12 this year? Um, no, 14. 14. So it's, I think it's extra cool. And thank you for that applause, by the way, because that's how I feel about it. I think it's extra cool that my anniversary and every day's anniversary are so close together so that we can, we can think of them as one. So today's question is, what is the worth of spiritual food? Because we've been talking about, we've been talking about spiritual exchange and energetic exchange and, and how that works and how that works to our benefit and, and how if the exchange isn't happening in a way that, that is honoring of both the giver and the receiver, then, then there's something that's out of balance. There's like a, um, there's, there's almost like a withhold. And so what is the value of spiritual food? And what I'm talking about in terms of spiritual food is the value that you feel from being present on Sunday morning 
and what you take away and can actually put to use for the week ahead. Because if you can't put it to use, it's of no value as far as I'm concerned. It's of no value. It's like eating foods that are empty calories. It's of no value. So our purpose, our, our gathered purpose, and my letter of call and job description make it my responsibility to see to it that there is nourishment on the table all the time at every day. Yes. And that that nourishment is useful. That nourishment has purpose. That nourishment is something that may cross our mind on another day other than Sunday, where we're facing a choice let's say, or we're trying to decide about something that, that maybe, whether, whether anyone heard it from me or they heard it in a conversation with another person who is here who, incur who gave them encouragement or they heard it from the practitioner that they did prayer with following service, it doesn't matter where it came from, there is a lasting, useful quality to what we find here, yes. which is why we come. Right. It's why we come. So let's talk about the price of eggs. <laughs> because when I was thinking about how the economy has changed and how things have become, a lot of things have become more expensive, I was thinking, well, you know, what, what's the one thing that I can think of that probably everybody buys for their household. And I decided on eggs. <laughs> and eggs are interesting because the process of, of becoming an egg hasn't changed a bit. Right? Right. And and the process of supporting that process hasn't changed a bit. Right. My, my grandma Hallie, who many of you have heard me speak about many times, she raised chickens for a long time. And um, consequently, my um, granddad decided, who lived with her, that I needed to learn how to kill one. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, uh, that's a story for another day. Um, so, so I'm pretty certain that what I'm saying is accurate. The process of making an egg hasn't changed, and the process of supporting that process hasn't changed. Now, what I can imagine is that if the cost of eggs are going up, or have gone up, which they certainly have, mm -hmm. then maybe the cost of feeding the chickens and supporting the chickens has gone up. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily enough to justify some of the price increases, maybe, but that's a judgment. And so when we're buying eggs, first of all, we get to choose that we're buying eggs, that we're going to still buy eggs, even though they are now, depending on 
what kind of egg it is, which sort of makes sense, but not so sure that the range of price really makes sense. But um, anyway, we get to decide what kind of egg we want, medium, large, extra large, brown, free range, etc. and how much we're willing to pay for it. Because the thing about the price of anything is not about someone's idea of its value. Listen up now. The thing about the price of anything is not about someone's idea of its value. It is what someone's willing to pay for it. That is its real value. So, if we're going to decide to buy eggs, then obviously they have value to us. And so we trade this stuff called money, which we've already shared and realized is, a, is entirely a human idea. Because there was a time when we used to be able to walk in with milk or butter or the a side of beef or something and trade, right? We've talked about that. But now we trade these funny coins and dollar bills. And we've decided as the shopper that whatever price we're paying for the eggs is worth what? Right. And so, so we exchange the money for the eggs, right? right. Yes. So why do you think I'm talking about this in terms of spiritual food? I'm talking about this because we don't have the same sense of what it means to receive something that we can use and use and use and use and not only can we continue to use it, whether it's Di Reverend Diana Lee's reading or my talk or Joseph's beautiful music or Martha's fabulous reading of the Four Directions, we can continue to use it indefinitely. Right. Those eggs are going to be gone eventually, right? Because we're going to eat them all or use them all. And then we have to buy more. But with spiritual food, the, the, the intention behind what happens here, not only on Sundays, but every day, what happens at every day, every day, is to support the, the gift of what is given for everyone's use in whatever way they find it useful. Mm -hmm. And we don't necessarily draw that equation. We don't necessarily draw that equation. And so, so let's talk about our attitudes about giving a little bit. So we've already talked about energetic exchange. 
right? Yeah. And we've talked about the importance of the energetic exchange being there being a, a, a equality to it, there being a regard for it, there being a respect about it. It's not just buying eggs. It's, it's a regard for the process that brought those eggs to us. And to support the people, not only that have the eggs for us to purchase, but also that support because, you know, anywhere. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, Albertsons, for instance. <clears throat> so Albertsons buys eggs so we can buy eggs. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we pay for those eggs. And that money appears to just go to Albertsons. But that's not what happens. Because Albertsons still has to pay for eggs. Right, that's right. And its employees. And every other thing that they make available to us. Right? Mm -hmm. So whatever the exchange is, it goes so much further. The good that it does, the blessing that it brings, goes so much further than just that moment of standing at the checkout counter and handing the cashier our credit card or, or money. It goes so much further. And the same thing happens with this center. Whatever income is, is our blessing to receive on a Sunday or in the mail or, or by means of electronic um, devices, we in turn, with great gratitude, take care of our responsibilities to service providers. It's all an exchange. It's all an exchange. Now, when it comes to the giving in, because I, as I've told you many times before, I, and this is with no expectation of anyone else, but I happen to be a tither. And the word tithe represents 10%. And the reason I've been a tither for a long time. I have been a tither since I, since I really grasped the importance of that energetic exchange and the difference that it made both for the organization as well as for me. How tithing began, as I explained a few weeks ago, I'll remind you again, is Early peoples, very early civilizations, recognized that it just felt good to give back by plowing into plowing it back into the soil. That's how they gave back to what they considered their higher power or their divine coach or what, however you want to think of it. They plowed into the soil 10% of their harvest. That's how they gave back to the earth. 
and that's where tithing began. It had nothing to do with signing something that said, I'm, I am going to give X amount of dollars. That came way, 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 <laughs> millennia later. So I give 10%, and I do it because it feels good to me. And that's 10% of everything. That's 10% of, of any monies that come to me. Because to me, there is no difference. It's not like, well, I can give 10% of this, but but the rest, it, I'm not, yeah, that I'm just going to give 10% of this, or I'm going to give what I can of this. Why are we having this conversation? Because it's, it is good to review our beliefs and our attitudes, and our, our decisions that we have held for a long time about anything. Yeah. And money is, is, is not precious. Right. It's just a thing that we get to use. And we get to use it for our good, and we get to use it for others' good. I've had people say to me, well, I give 10%, part of it comes to every day, and part of it goes to other charities. But I give 10%, and that is not the same. Congratulations. I'm glad for you that, that you feel great about that. And I'd like for you to consider that there is no exchange with the other charities. There is no energetic exchange with the other charities. The other charities are devoted to their work. So it's just interesting to notice that difference, to think about it differently, to maybe hold it differently, and to ask ourselves, am I making the energetic exchange with my spiritual home that I mean. Does it really feel balanced? Does it really feel the way I mean it to? It's good to check in. Because there are some things that we've done the same way for a really long time. Yeah. Without even thinking about it. Right? Yes. Without even thinking about it. I mean, we can sit down and we can write that check with our eyes closed. Because we've made it out the same way for so long. We have learned through changes in our economy, not just this one, this is not the first time, that prices have gone up on things. This is not the first time that there have been changes that um, made us reconsider about spending money on certain things that maybe under other circumstances we wouldn't even question. So believe me, I, I am sensitive to that. 
One of the things that really cemented, I would say, my personal belief in giving 10%, how many of you have ever heard of Edwin Gaines? Now I want you to know that Edwin Gaines is a warrior when it comes to our attitude and our understanding of, our attitude about it, our understanding of giving. She's fierce. And one of the many things that I have heard her say repeatedly is, you know, if you give 10%, you still have 90. <laughs> so if you think about the 90% being your 100%, does that change your frame of mind? It changed mine. Because I had never thought about it that way. I had thought about it as being, you know, just trying to calculate how I was going to figure out how to give what I wanted to give and, you know, still have enough money for this and that and the other thing. And gosh darn it, if there isn't always enough. Always. Not enough for every single, single thing under the sun and moon. That's not the point. There is enough to cover my responsibilities and there are enough, there is enough for me to make choices about other things. And this is true about every single kind of income. Yep. Whether we are earning it by working, whether we are getting it through social security, Regardless, we still have 90%. And 90% is a lot. 95% is a lot. I'm not, I'm not standing here saying, okay, now I want all of you to give 10%. That's not what I'm doing. I'm asking you to review. What is the worth of spiritual food? Exactly. I'm asking you to review how you have made these energetic exchanges for however long you have, in whatever way you have, in whatever quantity you have, and how much real thought real intention went in to your giving practice because it is a spiritual practice you know yes it is, it is. it's a spiritual practice and speaking of spiritual practices we're having class today <laughs> where we're continuing a spiritual practice that we started last week and if any of you missed last week it doesn't matter come anyway and and this class which lasts an hour after you've had a chance to have a, a snack or something <clears throat> It lasts an hour. It is intended because it is a gift from me, from the Everyday Center. It's intended to be spiritual food. Spiritual food that nurtures, that empowers that uplifts, that actually changes things yeah. for the better. Yeah. 
So I invite you to review. I invite you to reconsider. I invite you to just check in with yourself and, and, and just see if any of the things that I have talked about today in terms of the spiritual practice of giving, if any of that has ever crossed your mind. And if it hasn't, that's okay. There's no time like the present. It's never too late. And it doesn't matter how much you think you know either, because it is a reinforcement and, and expanding of what you are and who you are. So according to the goddess Patty, <laughs> it doesn't matter what we know or how much we think we know. It is an expansion of who we are and of who we think we are. How'd I do? Pretty good. Okay. <laughs> and so it is. And so it is.